Well, good morning and welcome to another Thought for the Day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. We're working our way through Hebrews chapter 13 and today we reach verses 5 and 6, but let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we rejoice in this new day. We thank you for all of your good gifts that you lavish upon us. We thank you that even in the sorrowing, suffering and hard times, your goodness is unquestionable and your faithfulness is sure. So be with us now as we turn our attention for these few moments to your word. Enlighten our eyes and thrill our hearts with the truths that you bring us. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen. We're going to read verses 5 and 6 from Hebrews 13. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? In 1963, you may not be old enough to remember that year, I was uh, a young man, uh, just beginning my teen years uh, in that year. In 1963, the Beatles sang, The best things in life are free, but you can keep them for the birds and bees. I want money. Give me money. But in 1964, they recorded another song in which they said, I can't, I don't care too much for money, for money can't buy me love. Now, you might be saying to yourself, the who? And I will say, no, that was another 60s group. I'm talking about the Beatles. I wonder what changed in that year. Maybe not much. Maybe it was just the fact that they had used someone else's song previously. And uh, it was just a way to reach uh, the, the climax of their career and work themselves up in the musical um, opportunities that were there in the 60s but money is a theme another group ABBA uh, made this comment in one of their songs it's a rich man's world well I'm here this morning to remind you if you're a believer in Christ or even if you're not it's not a rich man's world it's God's world so these verses which uh, the writer to the Hebrews uh, is concerned to bring to our attention, move us on from various other matters that we've considered already to look at the question of how you handle your money God's way. Previous verse, he'd spoken about marriage and we live in a society where we are encouraged to be liberal with our sex but conservative with our finances and Christ's priorities turn that on its head Christ says, be conservative with your sex, be liberal, generous with your money. And why should it be different? Well, it should be different because of two things. One of them, what God says, the other, what therefore we can say. In my morning devotionals, I'm reading through my Bible, uh, top to tail, uh, well, beginning to end, and I came across this verse as I'm reading through Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 7.12. Wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. Let me say that again. Wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge or wisdom is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it and the implication is money doesn't. You might love money but money won't love you. If you love God you do so because he first loved you and neither of those things can change. So what the author here is saying is don't live your lives even touched by this love of money. Money is not a bad thing, it's just a thing. It can't shelter you, it can't actually protect you. 
It will leave you as soon as it comes to you sometimes. Flies out of the window as soon as it comes in through the door. And you may feel that you have less than you could actually do with. Maybe just a little more would make life more comfortable. But let me say this. It is the wisdom of God which provides for you what you have. And it is the wisdom of God that withholds from you what you do not have. So the writer of his here is talking about being in comfort. Be comfort, uh, content with what you have. Contentedness is the aim. Keep your lives free from the love of money because of the security that God brings you. You might be tempted to think that money helps you control what happens in your life. But Christ says he is Lord. He controls what happens in your life. If you're not a believer, you have no Lord. You only serve things like money. You find your security. Uh, your eyes are looking towards what you can do in order to establish it. But the Christian believes that God controls and only him. And he has said to those who believe in his son, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Two nevers, the never never land of God. And so it is that we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? These human beings who threaten so much, who establish so vast kingdoms, who build such great monuments and edifices to their own power, they can do nothing in the face of a God who decides otherwise. But when the Lord is your helper, you need not be afraid. In the face of coronavirus, pandemics, natural disasters, wars, rumours of wars, threats from your neighbour, betrayal by your friend, all of the kinds of things that can rage against you, you need not be afraid because God is your helper and therefore nothing else is needed, the least of all, money. Be content with what you have. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have given us the eyes which see you, the heart which loves you, and the feet that walk in your way. May we do so more and more to your glory. Amen.